Thanks very much for coming along this evening. Uh, so just going to give you a little introduction or overview of what the MFA Fine Art Programme is about and maybe talk a little bit about why you might like to do an MFA and also um, what the MFA at NCD is like. And I'm delighted to say I've got the head of print, Katrina Leahy, and Fergal Fitzpatrick, head of media as well, who will also speak about their focus on their areas as well. So I'm going to start by just screen sharing and I'm going to go through some images at the beginning. So just hold on one second while we do that. Hopefully everybody can see the PowerPoint now, I hope. Great. OK, so introducing the MFA Fine Art. At the moment, the MFA Fine Art is a two year full time programme. We're also looking at introducing a part time route very soon. Uh, at the moment, the course begins in January and it runs through four academic trimesters. So it finishes in June of the final year. Um, I'm going to go. I'm just going to just kind of speak over some of these images here. Uh, so I'm going to show you a sort of a sample of recent graduates from the last couple of years of graduate shows. This is work by Isabel English. And I also wanted to say that the here in NCAD in the School of Fine Art, the MFA Fine Art is structured through four key departments in the School of Fine Art. So the four principal pathways are the Department of Painting, the Department of Sculpture and Expanded Practice, the Department of Print and the Department of Media. Um, so those are the, sort of the key departments that you can pursue the MFA through. We also obviously welcome the full range of contemporary art practice. So even if your practice isn't embedded in a particular discipline, if it's maybe more dematerialized or conceptual, there's also a place here to pursue, pursue study. So we might think a little bit about uh, these. Are, these are some graduates here uh, from 2022, uh, some of the class of 2022, and they're standing on the steps of the annex here, which is the postgraduate facility at NCD where all postgraduate students have dedicated studio space. And that's one of our sort of USPs, I guess, on the program here is excellent studios and moving into the final year of the program, all students have a totally individual space. And um, they start out in the annex and they finish in their home department on the main campus in Thomas Street. And the students here are with uh, Aoife Ruan, who's director of the High Lanes Gallery in Drogheda, and Aoife is a very experienced curator. And so part of the programme involves introducing students to key arts professionals, art critics and curators like Aoife. In this case, Aoife was doing a response to the MFA graduate show. So we might talk a little bit about why you'd want to do an MFA. Uh, I begin by saying that the, an MFA is now recognised as a kind of gateway to professional career as an artist. It's a sort of entry validation. So increasingly, the vast majority of contemporary artists have an MA qualification. Uh, sort of presupposes people have already done maybe a BA in fine art or other equivalent experience. So at that point, you'd have a substantial amount of experience already. So the MFA is maybe about unpacking some of that practice maybe experimenting or changing your work. Why do an MFA as opposed to spending a lot of time in a studio? I guess an MFA is a very intensive period of time where you can really develop your work, I would say, in a much faster, intensive way than maybe working on your own outside college. So the MFA offers you peer support, a dedicated specialist team of lecturers. And this is an example of some of the studio space at the Annex. Um, we also encourage our students to identify themselves as researchers to become part of the higher education research landscape, uh, which involves students uh, maybe accessing and going on to draw down funding as researchers so that all the money that the, the government has doesn't just go to STEM, i.e. Um, tech and engineering, but also goes to art and the humanities. So we'd be encouraging students to link up with other researchers to establish their own networks and some of our graduates have also gone on to do uh, funded PhD programmes as well. I just have a few examples of recent work. This is a, a painting by Keane McLaughlin, who's graduated uh, in 2023. Um, we, just to show you the range of practices on the programme, it's work by Kieran O'Keefe, who do, was a performance artist, um, and work by Sarah Edmondson, who worked in sculpture and video. This is from a show that our graduates did that year in the NCD gallery. Um, as part of the programme as well, there's regular opportunities for students to output their work in public exhibitions or events. 
some organized by students themselves, some through partnerships that we have in the college. Um, other reasons to do an MFA would be to obviously to develop your practice further to a more advanced level, to be informed about what's going on now in terms of the pulse of contemporary art. We recognize that art doesn't just happen in a vacuum, art happens in a context. So an MFA is a really good platform to position yourself as an artist, to think about the particular context specific to you as an artist, who you might want to reach out to, who your art might be in conversation with, both nationally and internationally. So the MFA gives you a platform to do that. It also provides you with a, a specialist audience. Um, art is obviously a form of communication. So we work a lot on the MFA in terms of developing ancillary sk skills as well as people's practices in terms of helping people to talk about their work, to write about their work and to present their work in, in to, to other audiences and to develop all those skills. So I guess that the MFA also involves a willingness to learn, a willingness to experiment, a willingness to be playful and to be experimental and to embrace failure if, if it involves failing in order to, to succeed better ultimately in the end. Part of the programme involves going on trips we go to various um, things, exhibitions in Ireland and abroad. This is a trip to the Liverpool Biennial. Um, this is a show students organise themselves at the Point, a big industrial space um, near the near the former Point Depot. And this is Kevin O'Kelly doing a performance. Uh, Glenn Fitzgerald doing a massive, large-scale, site-specific painting in this show. Um, this is a show we did in partnership with Solstice Art Centre in Navan, worked by Porrick McQuaid, um, as well as the, the, the sort of house course team. The, the team at NCD is built, most of the lecturers are all practising artists and specialists across a wide range of, range of contemporary practice. And we also bring in visiting lecturers as well to do specialist workshops uh, um, and curators and critics and whoever also responding to student feedback in terms of who they'd like to see coming in. We've for several years now, we've run an artist in residence program. This is artist Neve McCann, who is one of our artists in residence. And that's an artist who's working in a studio alongside MFA students and is available to students for practical advice, tutorials and other um, teaching and learning experiences. Um, this is a show uh, students organised in Rua Red, curated by the artist Lee Welch. Rua Red is an art centre in Tala that the MFA has an ongoing partnership with. So our students have had done shows there over the last couple of years and gained enormously from the experience of working in a state-of-the-art regional art centre. As work by Louis Haw, who's on the media pathway, Vanessa Jones on the paint pathway. Martina Labrick, expanded painting installation. This is a trip to the Venice Biennale in 2022. We might we have uh, moments of enjoyment on the program as well. It's not all hard work. Some of the is Beth O'Halloran, one of my colleagues, also teaching on the MFA. Uh, this is just a little bit of practical um, structure to give you an idea of the structure of the MFA. It is officially a full time program. We tend to kind of front load the contact hours to the beginning of the week across Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which is when a lot of the classes and contact teaching happens. Students have access, though, to studios Monday through Friday, and we encourage students to be in their studios to use them and to avail of all the technical workshops and facilities on offer, the resources of the college. The This is just a snapshot of what... Um, the, the first trimester might look like in terms of the classes students would be doing, uh, starting with research methods, which is an introduction to methods and research, particularly, uh, you know, situated in terms of creative practice, contemporary art practices, which is a module shared with our visual culture colleagues, where students experience a series of lectures about um, what's happening now, what are the key debates in contemporary art, MFA art seminars, which are run specifically by different departments each year, which focus on issues relating maybe that are more discipline specific, i.e. relating to painting or media. And then the last module, Practice Lab, is that's a key backbone of the programme that starts out as being a 10 credit module 
and it gradually increases. The practice modules increase across the two years of the programme until the final major practice project, which is worth 35 credits in the final year. And that's how that we gradually. So the spine of the course is very much it's a practice based course and the spine of the course are these practice modules. My, oh, these, this is just a selection of some of our visiting lectures we've had over the years to the course, which is a mixture of practicing artists, international artists and art critics, gallerists and curators as well. Uh, having said that practice is the spine of the program, we also recognize at postgraduate level that you can't have practice without theory. So practice and theory are very much interrelated. So we're all the time encouraging students to be critical, to be creative to challenge themselves and, the, and each other's uh, and not, not to take anything for granted. So that kind of goes hand in hand with practice the whole way through the program. Just keep you an eye on the time here. This is a quote from our leader, head of fine art, uh, which is about being ambitious, essentially, that we expect students on the MFA to be ambitious, that to recognize potentially at MFA level, the contribution they might make is to maybe change our perception of what art can do, the kind of contribution art can make culturally and socially in society. And so, and we also encourage students to think about audiences. In other words, you might have your specialist art audience, but there might be other audiences, the wider public, different communities that your, your art might be reaching out to, to how to find and nurture those types of audiences and how to communicate your work and how to make interventions that might have an effect in wider society, which is part of the NCD uh, strategic aim in general, which is to encourage bold and curious thinking at all levels across society. Uh, this is an example of work by Claire McCluskey. Claire was one of our students who was on a funded scholarship program that was making work in con conjunction with the new National Forensic Hospital based out in Portran. And that was working with um, in a specific si hospital situation. So our students have also worked in art and health situations. So not all the work produced in the program is ultimately designed for maybe a white box. There are many other ways to output work as a creative practitioner. I might talk a little bit about alumni alumni um, achievement as well. This is Stefan Bena Hanley, an installation from twenty nineteen. Um, Rin Kaljurand, who's originally from Estonia, a graduate from 2019, with a very interesting expanded painting process. Luisa de las Casas, Buza Kandakilic, the wall installation. This is our artist in residence program. These are, these are just some of the different artists we've had in residence. Helen Hughes, Lee Welch, Alan Phelan, Jackie Irvine, Mark Clare and Eve McCann. These are some of the curators we've had coming in and um, doing, you know, specific responses and public walk arounds, the graduate shows. We've had people like Matt Packer, the director of EVE International, Michael Hill from Temple Bar Gallery, Olivia Paldi from Project, Rachel Gilborn from IMA and Patrick Murphy. Alumni achievements. Many of our graduates uh, on the back of doing the MFA and the the MFA graduate show is very much a platform for people to kind of launch themselves. It's very well attended by the kind of small Irish art world. Our students have done very well in things like the RDS awards, and they've gone on to be successful in funding applications. So we've got people like Selena Muldoon, who graduated in 2016, who's now a very successful artist who has um, won numerous awards, including major awards like the Arts Council Next Generation Award. Sven Sandberg, who also won the Next Generation Award, was, in, was included in the RHA Future Show. More work by Sven. John Conway, who's also won numerous awards and is, is now... So at best, just nice to see that there is still life post-college, that many of our graduates have gone on and are still continuing to be successful contemporary artists in a field that is very competitive and is difficult to prosper in where our graduates are surviving are doing more than surviving are actually making a living, making a career as professional artists. Elaine Granger, who was shortlisted in the RDS Awards and won the Centre Culture Lirlande Residency Award in Paris 
and recently you had had work shown in the lab. This is just a sample of many, many other um, achievements and shows that our graduates have done. Anne Enser, a residency award in Ballin Glen in County Mayo. I'm now going to hand over to the first of my two colleagues. We're going to, although I said at the beginning, the MFA runs to four key pathways of painting, sculpture, print and media. This evening, we're going to do a special focus on the print department, followed by the media department. So I'm delighted to hand over to my colleague, uh, Katrine Leahy, who is head of print, who's going to speak a little bit about the wonderful team in the print department and the facilities and resources on the print pathway. Thanks. Thanks a million, Sarah. And uh, thanks to everyone for joining. So I'll just dive dive right in. So um, as Sarah said, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the, the, the uh, selection of the staff team. It's not not everyone who's involved in the department and and a bit about the resources and, and why you might um, maybe uh, elect to do uh, your MFA through the print um, pathway. So I guess students who opt for the print pathway um, as a means to undertake their MFA in fine art have the opportunity to be supported by a staff team who are not just experts in their field um, and, and print particular print processes, but demonstrate how the medium of print extends and expands beyond the confines of the print press and um, the workshop space itself. And staff members in print, you know, we, we all have, you know, connections and uh, affiliations to organisations um, beyond the college uh, that include the National Print Network of Ireland, Black Church Print Studio, Graphic Studio, um, both uh, significant and Cork Print Studios indeed, um, all of which are promoting and, and um, you know, um, uh, promoting print in, in very expanded ways through uh, through their member artists and exhibitions. We also, you know, staff also have kind of um, international affiliations with organizations such as the Franz Masseril Centrum in Belgium, which is notable as one of, you know, um, it's a stellar kind of international center for contemporary art, combining an artist oriented exhibition and production program with an international residency program for established artists and critics. And it also supports residencies um, for, um, uh, MFA or postgraduate schools and all with a specific focus on printed matter at large so with a staff uh, kind of profile that have connections to these um, kind of industries beyond college it's really it's really important and, and helpful for you as as um, you know as you step out it back into um, the world as artists yourselves um, and working within the realm of print um, students opting for the print pathway will have access to staff whose research interests are current and varied. So, you know, Sarah mentioned earlier about, you know, well, testing what the pulse of contemporary art is. And um, and I think all the, the staff within the department are really exploring kind of very topical um, uh, issues and themes. Um, and they... Uh, you know, they, they work through exhibition and... Um, uh, you know, attend conferences, um, they are practicing artists and have ongoing active research profiles. Um, in order to maintain a kind of a relevant currency in their discipline. And so I'm just going to kind of maybe gloss through or fly through some of the, the, the staff working with us. So for example, within the realm of arts and health, we have Emma Nukin, who makes work through dialogue, process-based, participatory and collaborative practice that places healthcare both service provider and service user at its center. And so her work often combines education, research and artistic practice and the print workshop as an inherently collaborative space acts as a stepping off point to generate some of these discussions. Um, Aoife Scott is both a lecturer and a master printer in the process of etching. Her discipline knowledge throws an age old tradition of, of, of etching into the 21st century and uh, exploring our fractured relationship with the earth. Her work is a complex, personal and deeply thoughtful response to the living world. And she sees print in an expanded sense as offering, um, you know, potential to express the deep impressions that we leave um, on our planet. So there's very much an ecological kind of focus within her work. Um, Neil Dunn explores the complex urban narratives that surround us. His print practice co-ops and adapts new digital technologies such as laser cutting, CNC routing and 3D printing to explore and incorporate urban semiotics within his works. 
and the visual language he employs reflects ideologies and materiality that have shaped the urban fabric and thus shape us. So Neil is kind of an example, I suppose, of how of where those digital technologies, which you know um, emerge from and are an extension of traditional print processes, you might think, about reproduction and duplication and prototyping. Uh, my own work explores deep time environmental histories and the latent effects of human interventions through uh, analog photography, expanded print, sculpture, moving image and installation, and preoccupied with the question of how to reimagine the landscape in a time of ecological crisis, my work often focuses on anthropogenic landscapes. So I'm going to move on to our technical staff, uh, which are really at the, the heart of, you know, um, the department and without them, the great work that our students do wouldn't, wouldn't be possible. So Liam Goff, our print workshop technician, has established extensive experience as both an artist in his own right and as a print technician within the commercial industry before joining as the full time technician in the print department. Uh, Mark Ferguson provides digital technical support to students exploring print as it interacts and is informed by new technologies. And so both their curiosities, I would say, of all things technical and their propensity to hack traditions and technology, they explore the hybrid of traditional analog and digital technologies. And this has, a, you know, their kind of enthusiasm for that and their interest and their security, their curiosity. And of course, by virtue of our teaching um, uh, the students also, it inspires students to explore how the traditional and the digital realm of print um, and its technologies um, and, cult and its culture collides. So on to say resources uh, with a fully um, equipped workshop that sits parallel to the undergrad studios. We have resources that cater for all traditional technologies, etching, screen print, lithography, relief print, and with the recent opening of the digital fabrication facility at NCAD, which is a college-wide resource uh, with state-of-the-art equipment such as laser cutting, CNC routing, and 3D printing, uh, students are exploring the capacity for these technologies to enter into critical dialogue through making with traditional processes. And it's important to say that while, of course, these resources are available to students, an MFA is less about the question of learning to master tools to repeat what we already know, but of relying on these tools to generate new proposals and to think differently with these tools to offer new propositions based on our 21st century world experience. Um, in terms of what our students might be concerned with, well, it's, you know, a range of obviously, you know, research themes that stretch across, you know, and, and, and indeed align with staff's own research as well, but some critique and challenge the very medium itself. So they're thinking about and critiquing the cultural legacy of printed matter. They're also concerned with the, you know, the invisible nature of print in its ubiquity. It's so present in our everyday that it becomes kind of almost subsumed by its own abundance. Um, and other others think of uh, print in terms of circulation, distribution of images, how, how mechanically or technically or digitally mediated images make, remake and unmake um, our world. Um, so ideas of authenticity and originality, the copy and the reproduction are called um, into question here. And I suppose in an age of ever expanding and infinite image production and expansion online, the limited edition etching in screen print or multiple suddenly appears to accrue more value. Um, so, you know, whatever the project or research interest, print first and foremost as a cooperative and a democratic enterprise and indeed cooperative and democratic space by way of the workshop, provides a space for peer learning and collaborative potential, while critically and philosophically we think of print as open-ended and a moving field of research that's constantly evolving and co-evolving with uh, new technologies. So thanks, Sarah. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, please do um, maybe put them in the chat or, or ask, uh, you can ask after. Will I jump in, Sarah? Okay, thanks. Um, well, thanks, Sarah, for the invite to talk today. And hello to everyone um, and the little black rectangles on screen. It's great that you're here. I recognize one or two names from our undergrad cohort from previous years. So you're very welcome back to. Um, 
I'll, I'll keep it really simple and then maybe encourage questions, um, but a little bit of an outline of the, the media department. We've had uh, a good cohort of MFA group, uh, students coming through and graduating over my 10 years in the department. Uh, this is, there'll be some images. I might just call the odd uh, slide forward, Sarah, as, as we go. I think I have four or five here. This is Istvan Laszlo um, from 2019. Istvan, um, is currently finishing a PhD in DCU at the moment. Um, I won't delve too deep into his work, but we'll come back to that. The, our department, when I'm describing it on open days and so on and events like this for undergraduates particularly, which helps give a grounding for MFA, is we talk about it having um, four main approaches to undergrad teaching, which are not reductive or um, prescriptive, but they help people understand where we're coming from. So in our teaching, we focus on four key things. One is what we call lens cultures. It's photography in every other language, but we welcome photography practices in, in, their, in all their expanded forms. Um, so we're not out to compete with Dunleary or TUD's photography courses, which are excellent. I know most of the people working on them. We're interested in photography in its expanded forms and how contemporary artists use the photographic image. Secondly, we're interested in artists moving image, sometimes reduced to being called video, but we call it artist moving image because we work with experimental animation. Um, we work with all kinds of kind of online formats like GIFs and whatever might be appropriate to the zeitgeist or to a longer provenance in art history. We work with what is generically called new media. So we have staff and technicians who are really excellent on um, virtual three-dimensional spaces using all the same technologies and um, hardwares and softwares as say the gaming industry, but we're interested in how those technologies can be oriented towards art spaces. Considering today the gaming industry is vastly bigger than the cinema industry when you consider how much influence cinema has on culture and art and so on. And within that, we have, um, within new media, you have virtual reality, augmented reality, you know, VR headsets and all that kind of stuff. We have the skills in the staff for developing that kind of work and critically contextualizing it as well. So one of the key things we do is to critically situate these practices in such a way that we're not just cheerleaders for corporate technology companies. We're interested in how you can use these things or work against the grain of them and so on. And then the fourth pillar that we talk about at undergrad is what we call critical making. Other people would say it's based on physical computing. You know, you've got Raspberry Pi, Arduino, Makey Makey, conductive tapes and paints and all kinds of ways of making basic computer actions legible and practicable for the uninitiated. So you might be able to build your own sensors, your own pressure pads. You might make lights, lights and sounds and videos and interactions occur based on, on these little uh, easily engineered pieces of technology. So those four pillars we talk about at undergrad kind of reveal and support the way we structure the department. Now, when we talk to students undergrad and postgrad, we encourage them not to see an artistic practice as reduced to being a video or photography. By all means, that's welcome if they want to do it, but we encourage a kind of a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, critically contextualized practice. So often students will bring in a drawing practice. We've had students who've come from, bring in experience in music or dance or performance. We've had uh, successful MFA students in the past who came from a computer, uh, programming background and so on. So it's often a negotiated entry point. Of course, we welcome and it's very clear if somebody has a good degree in undergrad fine art, that's a very good grounding, particularly if they're interested in lens or digital media. But we're also open to other conversations. Sometimes it's a recognized prior learning thing. Sometimes it's about a specific proposal and so on. But overarchingly, what we're interested in is in a culture where so much of our meaning is made through the traffic in digital images and sounds and gestures and material and so on. We're interested in how we can speak to and through these technologies in terms of art making. Um, so within the staff uh, teaching cohort, we have experts in photography, in video, in animation, in new media, in 3D, in virtual reality, in sound. We're also, we have a, I'll talk about facilities in a moment. So all of these kinds of component parts that might add up to audiovisual, digital, interactive, and so on, um, 
We have the the academic staff. We have Leah Hilliard, Claire Neidegger, Alan Butler, Cleana Harmy, Elaine Howey. Um, Dennis Mortel does some photography with us at undergrad level. And we have a really excellent technical team as well who are really superb at supporting these practices. So within our spaces, we have a, a large scale video studio with green screen facilities, green screen wall and floor. We have a, a fairly powerful um, lab full of PCs for all kinds of post-production in audio, video and still images. Um, some of those are custom built machines specifically built to handle the high data rates of virtual reality and so on. We have a dedicated photography studio. We have a chemical black and white dark room. We have a small recording sound booth for voice work on a microphone. And we have a surround sound five channel mixing uh, facility digital in hidden away in one of our spaces as well. So what we're interested in is obviously if you have an existing art practice or if you have an undergraduate degree or a degree in a cognate discipline, as we say, um, we're very open and interested in inquiries. Um, it might not uh, occur to you initially or immediately that this would be a good fit, but please come and have the, the, the conversation and, and ask. We get all kinds of proposals and we try not to say no. We try to say yes um, in, in most of these situations. And we also kind of encourage this interdisciplinarity. It's, it's, we're not looking for people who are obsessed with the technology. We see them as, as everybody else would, as, as tools, as means to an end. And they, they operate at their, at their highest levels, I think, when they're cross-pollinated with what you might call traditional skills or hybridized with other kinds of approaches to, to art making. I think I'll leave it there, if that's OK, Sarah, and then welcome any questions. Yeah, that's fantastic. Sorry, I lost my uh, access to the mute thing. I want to thank you very much, Fergal. Thank you, Katrina. That's fantastic. Thanks very much. I might, I'm might. just going to go on to one more slide uh, about how to apply before we go over to Q&A. So how to apply 2024. Um, as I said, the programme, the next entry will be in January 2025. If you wish to apply, yeah, there's loads of links to the NCG uh, website. There's an application form. Um, in terms of fees, the going by the fees has uh, changed slightly every year, but going on current rates, the current fees are 5,700 for EU. There is a small reduction for people progressing who are graduates of NCG. And then the fees are much higher for non-EU international students. You can apply for a SUSE grant for MFA. Um, and so that we do, a lot of our students might avail of that as well. Um, I've, um, just a little bit about the application. Would anybody making an application? It's a very straightforward process. We'd also like people to submit a short statement, uh, just basically outlining the context for their work at the moment, uh, the kind of contemporary coordinates for their practice, and maybe an indication it doesn't have to be exhaustive or by any means uh, complete, but just a little indication of what kind of project you'd like to work on, because there is a lot of self-directed projects on the program. If anybody's got any questions about any aspect of the application process, you're extremely welcome to contact myself or my colleagues in admissions. These are just some of our sort of frequently asked questions. We have a rolling deadline. Um, but we do have certain set points where we kind of gather together applications. So the first of those will be coming up around the end of March this year, and there'll be another one in early autumn. Um, so obviously, we'd like to encourage people to apply as early as possible. So that the places fill up gradually on the programme. And it is possible to have, uh, you know, we recognise people have got other life commitments, families and part time jobs. So usually our students are able to manage to do the programme and maintain other commitments they might have. It is a practice based MFA. There isn't an absolute requirement to write a thesis as such. There, there are small writing um, components from time to time. But in the second year, those who wish to write a longer extended writing can. Uh, those who don't wish to do that have the option of another more practical module, which is called Exploring Exhibition Dimensions, which is basically a collaborative event stroke exhibition project. Um, those are just an example of some some questions that were, that were asked. This is just uh, whoops. 
This is a list of our the, the, the key staff team. There's many more, as Katrina and Fergal have already indicated. There's a lot of people going into this in the School of Fine Art, including lecturers and technical staff as well. So these are some of just the key heads of departments. Uh, the administrator, Hazel Crowley, who does a lot of it, is a really important contact point for students as a key part of administrating the program. Um, myself and the admissions team headed by Camille as well are all great points of contact. We have an Instagram account, which is run, run primarily by the students, which is a good way to see what's happening on the program. Um, and that is, uh, you know, a link. I'm going to stop the share now 